Now, once again, because I was uh, running around like a crazy man, got a little nap this afternoon, so we're going to do one of these um, stratosphere lounge on the fly kind of things. And uh, what I mean by that is we're just going to take the questions. I didn't have time to pull them or look at them at all. Uh, and I'm going to just get them right off the website, which, of course, being Facebook cannot, there's no option that I've found. Maybe there's a very simple option and somebody can point it out to me, but I have yet to be able to discover now with this new thing how you can just sim I just want to rank comments in order of the likes. That's all I want to do. Shouldn't be that hard. It doesn't seem, I mean, your, your, your choices here are uh, top comments, uh, most recent comments, or top comments unfiltered. The most relevant comments appear at the top. Well, who's to decide relevant? I sometimes I'll scroll down and and I'll see things that are you know there's a oh my God there's an eleven down there. Anyway, um, I'll get to those, but we uh, we're gonna do a special request first because uh, it's been um, been uh, passed on to me that uh, that we've got some new record here I think, uh, and the record is. Uh, the record belongs to uh, Bob uh, Neef. Hope it's Neef. Hi, Bob. Uh, and the reason Bob's the the winner of the uh, tremendous uh, record award, and uh, Cheryl Toomey pointed this out for me, thank thankfully, was it appears that he has asked this question. Eyes are not what they used to be. Six times, I want to say. I usually, if I see a question twice, I try to answer it, and virtually all the time uh, at, at three. I try to answer it. So, uh, Bob, uh, sorry about that. And, um, and you know, as you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So um, whatever, whatever you did uh, to make the wheels of justice turn, let's just start with uh, Bob's question because it's a good question. And it's coming to us from way back in 1979. All right, here we go. Um, a more concise rendition of my question from a few weeks ago. Here it comes. In the past, our American society could go after godless commies as contrary to the American way of life, but the tyranny of Islam is protected by this ideology being veiled as a religion. Do we need to tolerate a religion, actually a political system, that wants to kill us? And is the Constitution a suicide pact? Uh, no, with qualifications, and certainly no on the second one. Uh, my article today in uh, Daily Wire, I don't know if it's up yet or not, uh, it's called Muslim Sheik, and this is just kind of a way to get to your question uh, a little bit, um, Bob. So here's, here's what I basically wrote about Muslim Sheik. I saw a story on Drudge about a designer in New York City, fashion designer, who's incorporating the hijab, the, the headdress, into her fashions, and there's a... Uh, she comes out in a in a hijab and it's beautifully embroidered, black with just lots and lots of silver, and then there's a couple of you know, as usual New York fashion show weird extremist kind of things, and then finally, um, hey, there's Bob, uh, hey Bob, uh, and finally um, there's a picture of about 20 runway models, and they're all New York runway models. You know that the only nutrition that they get is cocaine and 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 uh, nicotine from cigarettes, but. Every single one of these stick-thin um, Muslim-looking models, I'm sure there were uh, very few of them actually Muslim, although she said she tried to recruit from her home country. In any event, there's 20 fashion models who look like fashion models, and they are um, walking down this runway, and they're dressed in very gaudy, very gaudy costumes. I would, there's nothing particularly subtle about these gold and silvers and all these colors. Everything's very shiny and satiny, and some of them have gigantic, huge gold necklaces around their neck. Everybody's wearing some kind of jewelry. And um, they all have their, their head wrapped in the same kind of colored, uh, kind of like a satin um, hijab. So um, my, here, was, here was what I wrote about, because this is kind of the issue. On one hand, it's, it's really delightful. And, uh, and to the extent that it's um, kind of a stylish fashion for people who, who are bringing their religious beliefs w belief with them, I think it's great. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's terrific. I think it, it looks marvelous, and if that helps them, the self-esteem or, or, or whatever, if it, even if it doesn't, if, if it's something available to an American citizen that wasn't available before for their hard work and, and, and uh, freedom to purchase, then, then the uh, hijab fashion line is terrific. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There's no... There's no qualifications on that because um, women wearing, you know, uh, 
chic, uh, very uh, uh, expensive looking hijabs is none of my damn business. It's none of my business. However, the Islamification of America is my business. And when I saw these New York models in these hijabs, uh, I just felt this tremendous um, kind of a dread because it looked, it, it, this is what New York would look like if this was a, a Muslim country. It would, this is what New York would look like if it were a Muslim country. So that is, um, that alone is just a little alarming. And then I kind of got down to the brass tacks about, about what bothers me and what doesn't. And, and I think it's pretty much, I can describe it this way. And I'm getting to your question here, Bob, as always, it takes me, you know, 35 miles to walk uh, 16 feet. Um, what bothered me, first of all, is that looking at these fashion models wearing the hijab, I realized that in most of the, uh, many anyway, of the, of the Muslim countries of the world, these women would be very lucky uh, to get away with simply being scolded and maybe pushed or, or hit every now and then. That would be, I think, the, the least bad thing that would happen to them. Um, wearing those kind, of, uh, those kind of really gaudy clothing, that kind of attractive clothing, would get most of these people in trouble in many of the Islamic countries in the world. And that's when I realized exactly what's going on. The hijab is designed to, um, to pull people, to pull attention away from women. Uh, the the origin of the of the hijab is uh, that um, if men are allowed to see women's flowing hair, they will be so overwhelmed by uncontrollable lust that anything could happen. And so um, the women cover their hair to protect their uh, honor and their modesty, and their husbands can feel better knowing that their wives are going out there without their hair, driving you know Westerners mad with. Uh, with lust, and um, most of those people I've seen don't look like fashion models at all. So, now we get to the now we get to the point of the thing. She's basically making uh, a line of clothing that celebrates a culture that, taken in its most literal form, would probably kill you for producing that line of clothing. It's a little um, it's a little tough. Uh, what do you say about that? And so I kind of figured it out, I think, um, Bob, and that's the first part of your question, then the second part. What I came to realize, and this had this realization for quite a while, is that Islam, this isn't new, Islam is unique among the world's religions for many reasons, but when people talk about religious freedom in America, here's the problem with Islam. Um, it's not a question of, gee, it's a political system as well, although that is a bit of a problem, but, but just put that aside for a second. If you come to America as a Buddhist or as a Hindu or as an animist or as an atheist or a, you're a Wiccan or you're a Druid or you're a Jedi or whatever, you can uh, come to America and live by American principles without compromising your religion. The two uh, blend. You can shuffle the deck in such a way that you can do both. And it seems to me that only Islam is an exception to this case because Islam has a number of strict uh, of, uh, of tenets in it that are written in the Quran, spoken by Muhammad, and are taken to be literally true, uh, the following of which is not only um, incompatible with American uh, Republic, it's antithetical to it. And the, uh, the great example would be, you know, if you were standing outside of that New York fashion show and you started screaming, you know, on the street, uh, Muhammad's a, a pedophile and a murderer and and it's a religion of slaves, and uh, and you know, and on and on and on and on and on. People just look at you like you're just some nut. You're some nut with First Amendment protections, speaking his mind in a crowded city that is built by and uh, and inhabited by still uh, what is without question Judeo and mostly Christian laws. Whether or not the, uh, the the larger number of atheists that live there every day are aware of it, the the civil structure, the freedom to, to go out and speak your mind is a result of, uh, of Judeo-Christian, especially Christian um, beliefs, and you couldn't have it without it. Now, if, on the other hand, you're living under Islamic law and you make that same decision in New York City, if New York City were Islamic, and it looked Islamic, seeing these uh, runway models, and you went out there and said the exact same thing, you'd be, uh, you know, you'd be executed. Uh, here in America, you can be any religion you want, including no religion. Uh, if you leave Islam, according to what's written in the Quran, I'm not making this up, I wish I was, but I'm not. That's the death penalty for that. So, 
I think the point of the article, the point of the problem, and the one thing no one ever talks about, because we can never speak the truth out there, we never, ever, ever can talk about the real issues until finally somebody just sets, here it is, right? I mean, here it is, here's the issue. If you are a Muslim in America, you have to make a decision. And the decision you have to make is this. Are you going to abide by the constitutional laws of the United States, which means standing next to somebody on a bus stop and listening to them denigrate the, the, the prophet Muhammad and, and not do anything about it and understand that while it's offensive to you and, and deeply offensive to you, that you not only do not have uh, the ability to hit that person, you've got no right to control their speech, just that. Or, or are you in your heart of hearts wishing you had the power to shut that person up? And that's a decision that um, Western Muslims have to make. Uh, they have to they have to make a decision as to whether to live by the, the the laws and rules and cultural norms which the laws reflect in the Constitution or the ones in the Quran. They can they just have to take their pick. But you cannot have freedom of expression and still be killed for expression, and you can't have freedom of religion and still be killed for leaving a religion at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. I'm not aware of, there may be some cases, but I'm not aware of any other religion that poses this kind of fundamental basic uh, contradiction in their um, adherents' lives. So uh, what I basically wrapped up the article by saying is pretty much this. Um, it's great to see you trotting down the, uh, the catwalk, but I, I'd much rather prefer to know where you stand, you know. It's not what you're wearing, and it's not where, where you're walking, it's where do you stand. Uh, and why is it that we never hear this? Why is it that with all of the millions and millions of um, patri patriotic, hardworking Muslims, and I've met many of them, it's not, a, it's not a fiction, it's real. But why is it that we never, ever, uh, speaking to them rhetorically, why is it that we never, ever, ever see you stand up against this? Uh, why is it that, you know, every time there's a terrorist attack, the first thing we hear from CARE, which is, a, which is of course, a wholly owned subsidiary of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, why is the first thing we hear about it, the Muslim backlash? It's like, you know, some guy murders 100 people in Orlando screaming Allahu Akbar, and, and the first thing that we're going to hear from the Muslim community is the backlash that's going to come back and hit Muslims because of this? The reason there's a backlash, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, is because, um, you know, 15, 16 years after 9-11, I still have not seen any instance where the essentially the unified group of American Muslims stood up en masse and said, we utterly, utterly condemn this terrorist act, and we are here to um, live a new life under the laws of the United States of America. Never seen it. Um, and that's alarming to me. It's alarming to me in a way that a Buddhist is not alarming to me because a Buddhist is not commanded by his religion to destroy the values of this country that, that I happen to love and, and, and values that I think are immortal and timeless. So there's the conflict, uh, Bob. That's pretty much it. And so to answer your question, your first part of the question, do we need to tolerate a religion uh, or political system that wants to kill us? We have to tolerate a religion that um, we have to tolerate a religion that wants to kill us, so long as the adherents to that religion don't act on that particular uh, on those particular um, you know, strictures. In, in other words, we have to respect the uh, religious freedom of Muslims in America, so long as they have made the decision to live by constitutional laws and not by Islamic ones. And if there's any evidence that they are living by Islamic laws, I don't want to wait until we're gunned down in the streets or blown up in gas stations or something. But if somebody starts to basically say, you know, we want Sharia in America, if I ever heard anybody, Native, Amer Native here or immigrant or not, if I, if I ever run into anybody saying um, that we should have Sharia in America, I think that person should be deported to a place where there is Sharia. And they can enjoy themselves enormously. Uh, it is antithetical to um, our, our beliefs. And uh, ATSA 608 says, where is the Muslim Martin Luther? Who's going to reform Islam? Who's going to change uh, the um, 
sort of the Catholic uh, Inquis Inquisition into the the, the Reformed uh, Protestant movement. Where's that? Where's that critic who's basically going to, uh, from inside of Islam, um, make Islam into a into a modern religion? It's a shame that making something into a modern religion often means watering it down. But there are a lot of uh, a lot of things that modern Christians don't do that early Christians did, and so on and so forth. So as far as their religious, religious belief goes, their dress, all of it, they're entitled to that, and, and we have to tolerate it, I think. And the reason we have to tolerate it, Bob, is because the same reason that was explained to me when I was a little boy and my dad saw Nazis uh, marching in Skokie, and, and he fought the Nazis, and he wasn't very happy about them at all. And when I told him, why don't we just lock these guys up, he said, if if... If we determine that some people are not allowed to say their, speak their mind, then that means somebody has to decide who gets to speak and who doesn't, and that's where the danger is, Billy. Um, so uh, that's kind of the hair-split answer to your first question. We have to tolerate the religion as long as the religion is the modified form of Islam that is practiced by so many Muslims around the world and here, uh, and not the, um, the, the religion as it's written in the Quran. And this is the thing that the, that the progressives will never admit to, and this is why we don't get any attraction or any progress on this subject. Because no one will come out and say that the issue is, that the problem is, is that the religion commands people to kill. It commands them to kill. The religion instructs people in methods of warfare. The religion... Um, commands people to defeat non-believers and to colonize their uh, their lands. This isn't an aberration from the religion. The people that don't do those things, the civilized people, are the ones who are the um, apostates. They're the ones who are not uh, following the religion. And until we get down to that, until we get down to that um, particular wedge, we're not going to have a solution to this problem. And I think, I think that uh, moderate Muslims living in America who've made the decision to live under the Constitution, I, I'd feel a lot better if I saw them stand up and say so. I want to see them stand up and say so. I want them to say, hey, you know, I, I was raised Islamic, I was raised Muslim, and, and I, many of the uh, tenets of, of Islam, a family-oriented, lack of, you know, no drugs and all that other stuff, I believe in that sincerely, but I've decided that we're going to live our lives as Americans, uh, not under Sharia, and we don't we don't like those values. That's what we came away from. Then, if I heard that, I would be enormously relieved. But I haven't heard it. And when you ask some of these people about why you haven't heard it, they say, "Well, if you know, if we say that, we could be killed." And that's when we kind of come back to the beginning, right? Yeah, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? I mean, isn't that kind of the problem? Somebody, if a Buddhist blows up somebody which is almost a contradiction in terms. But if somebody just decided to, you know, go around and start gunning people down and you know, start talking about Buddha, the rest of the Buddhist community would not be scared of saying this is a crazy person, it's an aberration, it's not a religion. But when you hear um, uh, moderate Muslims in America and Europe, you, um, you don't hear that. You hear people who are afraid. And so, uh, having studied um, the history of societies that are afraid, I've made this a real point of uh, interest for me. I know how, um, how terror starts. I know what terror does to a population. I've seen many societies living in terror. Or terror is a political weapon. Murder, uh, you know, beheading, um, stoning, throwing homosexuals off of a building, that's those are designed to promote terror, and you know they're designed to promote terror because they're done in public. You can't claim that it's even a religious thing in GCS, it's a brutal religion. If, if it was a religious punishment, if it was a civic punishment to do these horrible things, then um, you know women would be stoned in private and homosexuals would be killed behind bars and all the rest of it. It's done to terrorize the population, show them what happens to you if you decide to leave Islam or if you decide to criticize Islam. As with everything else that we see out there, it's just another form of power uh, from people who have to tell other people what to do, and it's a particularly brutal one. So the other problem is this uh, with, the, um, with the hijab culture, and that is that as much as it's uh, painful for moderate Muslims, and it's painful for me too, uh, believing in freedom and, and believing in people's right to be left alone, but the facts are that every time a Western, a liberal Western democracy 
um, admits Muslims in large numbers, the pattern appears to be pretty consistent, and that is that certain things happen when the Muslim population reaches 2 or 3 percent, something else happens when it gets about 7, 8 percent, and when it gets above 10 percent, something else happens. It gets more and more and more radicalized. It gets more and more demanding, more and more um, brutal, more and more violent. And uh, we, we didn't just see this once. It's not a one-off fluke. It's, happening, it's all happening everywhere. And that is alarming to people who are not Islamic. And uh, in this article, uh, the woman, uh, the designer, uh, her, she's from, I want to say Indonesia, as I recall, and uh, the uh, vice consul from Indonesia, a woman, said, oh, we think this is wonderful. It's a, gr it's a great chance for people to see the real Islam, and, um, you know, especially when we've been getting a lot of bad press lately. You've been getting a lot of bad press lately because people have been murdering other people in the most bloodthirsty, brutal fashion they can find, trying to get as much attention as possible, shouting out your core religious belief. Um, and that's why you're getting some bad press. It's not like somebody decided to, you know, slander you guys. It's, it's real, and it happens. And again, I think this is the issue for me. Why don't we hear an ongoing chorus of... of uh, denial, an ongoing, just a sort of a perpetual, uh, hey, look who it is, hey, baby. Uh, why don't we hear a, a, an outcry? Why, why, are, why, are, why aren't Muslim Americans as upset about this as uh, non-Muslim Americans? They may be, but they say that, but you, there's no sign of it, and that's an indication that this religion is uh, different and dangerous. So, uh, there we go. Um, I hope that did it for you, Bob, uh, and I'm sorry it took us a whole incredible, insane uh, six tries for me to get to that question. We usually do a little better than that. All right, so on the fly now. Um... <laughs>